Fast Planes Family High School. This is Kieran Adams. So let's hear from Julia with your morning announcement. Good morning, Scotch Plains Fanwood High School. Today is January 13th, 2021. Today is an A-Day. Saga will be holding a meeting today at 2.30. Please contact Mr. Coatsner for the meet code. Model UN News. Over the past weekend, student members of the Model UN participated in intense negotiations and cooperation with dozens of members from other regional high schools. Usually this takes place in Hershey, Pennsylvania, so the reward is always chocolate, chocolate, and more chocolate. However, in robbing us of our requisite sugar highs, COVID-19 also allowed us to truly see the dedication of the of the Scotch Plains Fanwood delegation, as students dressed in business attire in order to participate in four Zoom conferences with cameras on. The awards earned at the conference are as follows. Scotch Plains Fanwood High School was one of the schools that earned the honor of outstanding delegation. Audrey Gabay was named Premier Diplomat for her role in Political and Security Council A. Olivia Gomez was named Outstanding First Year Delegate for her work on Security Council B. Rhea Kishen was our shiny penny for this year. Rhea earned the honor of being named Premier Diplomat for Security Council A. She was also elected to serve as the 2022 Officer for Security Council A. Additionally, she was also one of only 20 students selected to serve in the Conference on National Affairs. Thank you to all who participated and we look forward to something resembling normal next year. Theater announcement from director Morgan Knight. The Fall Play 2020 is on for Spring 2021, with Repertory Theater 2021, the musical, to follow. As expected, both processes will be a little different than usual. There will be an SPFHS theater interest meeting today from 3.15 p.m. to 3.45 p.m. in the SPFHS Theater 2020-2021 Google Classroom, code XK6JA4V. First, we will discuss a general timeline for the theatrical season. After that, we will discuss the play program more specifically, material and auditions and such. The, th the team is excited about the direction in which we're taking the play this year, and we encourage anyone who's interested to stick around. If you can't attend, there will be resource packets, and feel free to contact Morgan Knight at mknight at spfk12.org or Mrs. Allen at jallen at spfk12.org. Now we have Brian interviewing Julian Martin on the AV Club. What's up, Raiders? I'm here with Julian Martin from the AV Club, and we're going to ask him some questions about AV Club. So tell me, first of all, how are you doing today? Uh, I am doing really well, thank you for asking. It's been a pretty good day. Uh, yes, it has been. So tell me, what is a club, AV Club exactly? So it's a club for people who like movies and TV, uh, like talking about movies and TV, or like making movies and TV. What it's like is we come in and we brainstorm ideas for different film festivals. Uh, our biggest, most popular one is the Halloween one. And we're put into groups. We can make our own groups or uh, we sometimes do a mixer thing where people are put into random groups. And then about one month or two months later, depending on whatever holiday or whatever event it is, uh, we have to create a short film by then uh, that encompasses some element of whatever theme we're doing. And that's pretty much most of the club. We also film a lot of the events for the school um, and generally just do whatever other camera stuff is needed. Okay, so you bring up events for the school. Would you like to elaborate on what those events specifically are? Uh, yeah, sure. So a big thing, a lot of kids, I haven't gone to do this yet. Um, just scheduling has never worked out so far. Uh, I hope to soon. Um, just filming the different sporting events is probably the biggest one, like the football games, the soccer games. Of course, in non-COVID times, there's a lot more of those. Uh, but recently, what I just helped film and edit is the theater department had a music video type compilation thing uh, where certain kids were chosen to do a performance and it was filmed partially in the school, partially in other locations. And I was given a really great opportunity to help film some of the performances in the school, a few of them out of the school, and I got to edit one, which was a really fun time. There's a lot that goes into this. It's very interesting. Yeah. I like hearing this. Ah, love those guys. Love those guys. We're both great. Great people. Great people. Yeah. <laughs> See, obviously, you seem to enjoy AV Club very much. And yeah. for any inspiring people who want to, who may want to join, can you explain to people why should they join AV Club specifically? <clears throat> so it's just like it's fun. That's honestly the biggest thing I can say for this club. 
Uh, there's a lot of the cl clubs in the school that are doing great work and doing lots of activist stuff and doing school related things. I think this is a great club if you're interested in video making or want to learn stuff. Like definitely it's a very nice group of people and they're always happy to help teach you things and uh, give you great information. But really also just it's such a fun experience and school is so stressful that like you know it's just it's a great break even if you're not super into filmmaking mm -hmm. interesting so you go on saying about how school can be very stressful is this kind of the reason why you joined in the first place or is there another backstory <laughs> as to why you joined if you would like to explain what made you join yeah. in the first place or motivations we'd love to hear that yeah um i personally i've been into filmmaking since elementary school it's something i'm super passionate about i'm starting to look at film schools to go to uh post-graduation and I personally join, I know this isn't everybody's story, but I'm just obsessed with filmmaking, watching films, critiquing them. And uh, it's really just my passion. So it's great that our school has a club where I can express myself in that way and has helped teach me so many more things and grow in art I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I love to hear that. So since you're very passionate about movies, I'd like to ask you one question. What are your top five favorite movies of all time? You don't have to go too in depth, but if you'd yeah. like to, you can go ahead. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I have this app Letterboxd, as do a bunch of kids in AV, which is an mm -hmm. app to track your favorite movies and stuff. And uh, I pretty much change my favorite movies every day. Let's see. Ghost World from 2001, it's a really great quirky coming of age movie that's just really hilarious, really out there, really edgy, really great film. Um, Uncut Gems is another one, came out last year. Uh, that one's pretty divisive, I always like uh, when people talk about how much they hate it, because <laughs> the way it's filmed, like the cameras are super shaky and everybody's screaming over each other. You will walk out of the film with a headache and either be like, that's amazing because I have a headache, or I have a headache, why would anybody like that? Uh, those two films, um, hmm. Uh, Rebel Without a Cause is a great classic. I first watched that in eighth grade English. Uh, I just love the 1950s and everything to do with that era. And that film really just shows like what youth culture was like at the time. Uh, two more, okay. Um, I guess I'm a big horror fan. I'll have to pick one horror at least. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess I'll go with Krampus for now. Uh, that one came out a couple years ago and I always pick it as one of my favorite horror films just because it's so underrated and so overlooked and a lot of people trash on it, but it's just, it's so much fun. And my final fifth favorite film uh, I'm going to say The Room, because I love terrible films, and it is just like, it's the godfather of So Bad It's Good Cinema, where it's just like, every possible thing that could go wrong went just horribly wrong. And it's just, it's such a great film. Love that. Love that. I'm, I'm a big fan of things that are just so bad, it's so good. It makes yeah. it more enjoyable, even when it's bad. It's just fun to enjoy exactly. that. Movie. Yeah, The Room is that. like, it's the king of all of that. It's, <laughs> it's brilliant in all the worst ways. Love that. So going back to AP Club, a AP, AV Club for a second. Yeah. What yeah. was your favorite thing that you've worked on in AV Club so far? Hmm. Usually any Halloween film fest is a really great time. I did a film for this Halloween film fest called To Be A Witch. Uh, that was a really fun one to make, and I got to try a bunch of new things that I've never tried before. And again, AV's given me that opportunity to learn, and this is really just like... Uh, that's probably the thing I'd say turned out the best. What I had the most fun on, I made a film last Halloween Film Fest. I got to write this one and do some of the acting, I didn't direct it. Um, called Soulmates, which was about a killer sock puppet. And it was just, it was so much fun. The whole experience. Um, I worked with that. I worked on that one with a few people. Uh, shout out to Alex Halpin, um, who's in college now, who directed it, and JJ, who played the person who was fighting me, the evil sock. Uh, that was just like I'm probably going way too in depth into the history of that film. It was just it was such a fun experience. All right, I've gotten a chance to see some of them. Not a lot, like one, I think. They're very they're very well made and very funny. I love them all. Oh, You're thank doing great. you. Thanks. No problem. So, since you're putting all this time into making films and movies, I want to go into depth. What inspired you in the first place to make movies like these? 
Um, so what really got me started out in elementary school, I wanted a video camera for Christmas, and it was like I never thought of it as anything more than like a fun toy to make stupid videos with. But I got that, and then I started wa like watching more movies too, my parents were showing me. And I just began noticing the different kinds of shot angles and stuff in the films. And so I specifically remember, uh, I forget what film it was, but I watched it and the shots were really cool. And the next morning I went out and just like started to remake the shot I saw in that film. And so since then I've just like gone crazy and that's what started me out. Love that. Love that. I love stories like that. So let's go into some, let's go to back to AV Club and your accomplishments. Yeah. What is the one thing in AV Club that you are the most proud of doing? Like what is something that you can hang up on the fridge at night and be like, I did this, this was me. What made you most proud? Um, hmm. I think in terms of films, I'd probably say again to be a witch, which I made last October. Uh, mm. That one I made for the Halloween film fest and it just, out of everything I've done, I personally think it turned out really good, and I'm really, really proud of it. Uh, for not films and just general accomplishments, um, it was really fun getting to work on the musical thing this year, uh, and getting to film and edit it, because I've never made a music video before, and it was really fun. I The one I edited was also one I completely filmed every part of it, and so it was really fun getting to... Uh, uh, just to create a music video from scratch like that. It was a really fun experience. That sounds nice. That sounds nice. Now, on the other side of the coin, what do you think was your biggest regret or mistake on your filmmaking journey just in AV Club so far? What was the thing that you kind of regretted doing? God, there's so much, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I think one huge mistake I made, uh, I went out to film uh, every year for the Valentine's Day Film Fest, I make the next part in this series I have called Be Mine Forever. That's just like a uh, fun little detective thing. That one's really mainly just for fun, you know. But part two, I remember it was a really windy day in February, freezing. And I had forgotten the mic at my house. And so we oh. went out and we filmed it and it was just the audio from the camera itself. Which of course isn't as good as a Rode audio mic. This is when I had first gotten the mic. so. Um, I guess I just wasn't thinking. And anyway, I had to spend like a solid two hours playing around with the sound so that like what was happening actually made sense. Oh my so, God. Yeah, even though it, it was still, I'm still proud of a lot of the things in that film, but really just not taking the time to collect all of my materials, just, uh, you know. Mm, that sounds draining. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel you, I feel you on that. Yeah. So one last question. Overall, how would you say movies have changed your life? Have they, how have they made you the person you are today? Really, like, I don't want to sound pretentious, but they've kind of become my life in a way where, like, I'm always thinking of another idea, everything, everywhere I walk, everywhere I look, I'm constantly thinking of either shot angles or writing. And it's, you know, it's my passion and it's just like, there's nothing else in my life like that, if that makes sense, where it's mm -hmm. just, I'm just, it, it's like my eyes are constantly creating, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I definitely have my own passion. I'm still working through it, but I definitely see where you're yeah. coming from. Again, thank you for coming out, having this interview with us. Yeah, thanks so much for having honor. me. It was great. an honor. And right, have a good day, Raiders. That's all for today. Thank you, Raiders, and have a great day. JJ Dionisio and Ben Friedman are amazing.